Hey, good morning and welcome to United West Southeast Louisiana's September uh, investor call. We're glad to have all of you on the line with us now to talk uh, about uh, some of the great work that's going on at uh, United Way, thanks to your, your generous support. Um, let me start by asking that we all take a moment to reflect on um, the fact that 17 years ago today, um, the Twin Towers fell, the Pentagon was struck, and uh, many, many lives were lost. And so I know many folks around the country, you know, we all remember where we were at at that point um, very vividly. I do think it's important to take a moment to reflect and, uh, and think about the lives lost, but also um, the work still needs to be done to, to continue to support the great country that we live in. And a special, uh, a special acknowledgement to all the first responders that we know that are out there putting their lives on the line every day to keep us safe. Um, so uh, as uh, right now, we're all gathered together, the leadership team at United West Southeast Louisiana for a staff retreat where we're talking about uh, work we're, we're doing around diversity, equity, inclusion in particular, how do we build not just a more equitable organization, but also um, how do we begin to measure equity at the community level? And so we're, our staff was in a two-day retreat working together. So um, please know that we're doing this work uh, once again on your behalf and thank you for your support. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge our newest member uh, to the United West Southeast Louisiana leadership team, Mr. Todd Batiste. Come on. We can give him a round of applause. Yay. Yay. Uh, Todd's here with us today. Um, uh, Todd re recently was promoted to Vice President of Community Impact, which is building on a stellar career leading all of our education work, but also Todd's taken on a greater leadership role around diversity, equity, and inclusion within our organization, but also in the community. So Todd, congratulations and welcome to the team. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And you'll hear from Todd a little bit later in the agenda, so he'll share more about the work that, that he's doing. But all that said, I'd like to introduce our board chair, Bob Kimbrough, who's retired managing partner from EY, also known as Ernst Young, to say a few welcome, welcoming remarks from our board. Bob. Yeah. And good morning, and, and thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. And uh, in my second month of retirement, and uh, also in my second month as the board chair of, of the trustees for United Way, and it's been a real pleasure to be in that position. And we'd just like to welcome uh, each of you to uh, to our September call. We thank you for your interest and support of United Way, and, and more importantly, the work uh, that you do in our communities to support those uh, neighbors of ours who are in need. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I want to take just a minute, uh, each one of these calls, and just kind of give you a quick update and let you know what the Board of Trustees is focused on. And we'll hear in just a few minutes from um, about more about our annual campaign from Lee, but I just want to let you know that the board is fully focused on the campaign. We have an excellent campaign chair, Roger Ogden, and he's got assembled a, a wonderful campaign cabinet. And we as the board are doing everything we can to support uh, that cabinet. Uh, and also, and more importantly, trying to raise as much money as we can to support our mission of uh, eradication of poverty through the uh, Blueprint for Prosperity. Um, so that's our, our primary focus right now. And in fact, our next board meeting is going to be a joint meeting with the campaign cabinet and the board of trustees to be sure that we're aligned and focused and having as many touch points as we can in the community trying to uh, expand our funding and donor base. And I think the other thing that as a, as a board we're, we're you know, continually focused on is, are the strategies around uh, what works best in, in order to achieve our mission of, of eradication of poverty. And so there's an ongoing dialogue we have with, with, within the board around strategies. And you just heard from Michael that he and his team were assembled in trying to develop sort of the tactics around those strategies and the implementation of that. And at the board level, we continue to focus on strategies and to the extent that we have you know, some changes or uh, you know, different things we'd like to try to focus on as a board. We'll try to update uh, this group uh, on future calls. But once again, thank you for your participation and support in the work you're doing in the communities. And I'll turn it over to uh, Lee to talk a little bit more in uh, details about our annual campaign. Thank you so much, Bob. Um, especially under your leadership, the leadership of Roger Ogden and our entire senior leadership team and staff, um, we're really excited that we were able to kick off another amazing campaign on September 1st. We have an aggressive but achievable goal of $11.9 million 
to reach the many um, health and human service needs of the individuals in our community to make sure that we're moving people out of poverty. So um, we're thrilled um, that so many organizations have already kicked off their workplace campaigns. I'd like to highlight a few just to thank them for their support. Hancock Whitney Bank, People's Health, Canal Barge, Shell, Jones Walker, UPS, International Paper, Morris Bart LLC, Iberia Bank, Mahoney's Po'boys, Loop LLC, Wells Fargo, and Acadian Ambulance. And once again, this is just some of the hundreds and hundreds of organizations that come together to support United Way in our work. And um, we can only do this work with individuals at home and at the workplace coming together and, and um, supporting through any gift that they feel comfortable giving. So we're so thrilled to kick off the campaign. We have 33 members of our campaign cabinet that are aggressively trying to identify um, new opportunities for revenue. If any anyone interested on this call would like to help us with that goal to um, to grow new revenue, to connect with new organizations, workplaces to support our mission, we'd love to, to talk to you. And almost everybody on this call probably has our my contact information, but you can also go to our campaign headquarters on our website. I want to give a, a recap of an incredible event that we had uh, last Thursday, August 30th at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Our Women United organization hosted our Passing of the Gavel and Women Leaders of Change Luncheon. Um, we were able to celebrate the uh, incredible year of Women United success in improving the lives of women and children in our region, passing the gavel from 2016-2018 Chair Kathy McRae to 2018-2020 Chair Alexis Tucker. In addition to hearing about the great work that's been done over the last two years, we were able to hear from incredible women leaders of change at this, this time in, in New Orleans, this uh, tricentennial, Helena Moreno, Sybil Morial, Susan Spicer, and Sheba Turk all shared their experiences and their, the work that they're doing to lead this effort and, and be, be women of change. We had hundreds of attendees um, in the room at the Hyatt, the Hyatt Regency Hotel, and it included many of our current Women United members and prospective members of Women United. If any women or men are interested in joining Women United, you can reach out to our resource development team members or visit our website for more information. We'd love to have you involved in this incredible organization. And lastly, I want to announce an amazing event that we are um, putting all the final touches on. It's going to be Thursday, November 1st. It's our annual Tocqueville Awards celebration. Tocqueville Award is the largest um, award distributed um, by United Way. And this year we're honored to be honoring um, Mary Keller Zervagon for her decades of support of United Way in our entire region um, through her public policy, volunteerism, and philanthropy that she is she has been so generous um, throughout her throughout her community service. So we're excited to honor Mary Keller Zervagon on November 1st at the Ritz Carlton Hotel, as well as honor our legislative champions of the 2018 public policy agenda that that our public policy chair um, Kim Sport, our public policy committee, and Charmaine Cassiope have been so um, successful in. And so I'm, I'm excited to pass the torch over to, um, to Charmaine to talk about that work specifically. Thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to say that um, it's hard to believe it's only been five years, but we've literally made history in the arena of public policy and advocacy. I'm delighted that we're going to acknowledge as part of this magnificent event the extraordinary work that will demonstrate not only the courage our board has exhibited, but the fact that we are truly moving the needle on issues we know are impacting not only our Alice families, but all of the citizens we have a moral obligation to serve throughout our seven parish region. I'm delighted to say that we have a vast uh, array of outstanding legislators because I think it's fair to say none of us does this work in isolation and were it not for the strong courageous support of our bipartisan leadership at both in the uh, state house of representatives both in the executive branch as well as in the Louisiana state senate we would not accomplish the many successes that we have under our belt I'd like to highlight that we will be honoring champions like Joe Marino, Walt Leger, J.P. Morrell, Dewey Stokes, Helena Moreno, Troy Carter, Stephanie Silferty, Sherman Mack, Melinda White, Patrick Jefferson, Patricia Smith, Polly Thomas, 
Ron Getty, Ron Johns, Rick Ward, Regina Barrow, Larry Bagley, Beryl Amity, and Kirk Talbot. That just gives you the indication that the work that we are doing is strongly bipartisan and embraced overwhelmingly. I'm also delighted to say that we will honor Governor John Bell Edwards and his wife Donna for the extraordinary support that they have given us, especially as it relates to our foster care initiative. I'm also thrilled to bring you up to date today on a new program that has been launched as part of the Public Policy Committee for United Way of Southeast Louisiana, and that's the official launching of the Loyola University New Orleans College of Law and United Way of Southeast Louisiana's Nancy M. Morsiglia Institute of Just Justice. I want to applaud two extraordinary co-chairs, that being Madeline Shank and Patty Riddleberger for the extraordinary support that they have given us. And I also want to acknowledge that we now have officially convened our inaugural class of 25 exemplary individuals from throughout our seven parish region. These individuals come with uh, ages ranging from 19 to 77. They have different political persuasions. They are a magnificent group who are looking forward to studying under the extraordinary leadership and um, leadership of our uh, teacher, Martha Palmer, the U.S. Constitution, its articles, and our Bill of Rights. I can tell you that we were excited because at that first convening, Michael, we were thrilled to have you there, our co-chair, but it was a real tribute to the work that we are doing because not only was Dean Landrew there, but we had a special guest visit us, and that was her sister, U.S. Senator Mary Landrieu came in to welcome everybody to this first of its kind Institute of Justice. I also want to acknowledge that we were also able to have our inaugural class greeted by the president of Loyola University, our very own champion herself, Tanya Tetlow. So I think we are engaged in some very exciting work. And I will conclude my remarks today by saying, please join me in congratulating the extraordinary Kim Sport on having just recently been appointed by Governor John Bell Edwards to join the Louisiana State Board of Medical Examiners. I can assure you this is quite a prestigious honor, and I think it is duly bestowed on her as a result of the extraordinary work that we have been doing in the women's health arena. So with that, I'm now going to um, end my remarks and turn it over to my colleague, Jimmy. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanna start my remarks by saying that um, this is August. We are in the middle of hurricane season, and I want everyone to know our best thoughts and wishes go out to the entire East Coast as Hurricane Florence is set um, to possibly devastate that, re that region. Um, we're thinking of them. We wish them the best as they prepare for the hurricane. And we know that any type of devastation that might become them because of this hurricane impacting them can take years to overcome. And we also know that one disaster and one crisis can plummet people into poverty. And so we really wish the best. Um, as it relates to that, just so you all know, many of you have received updates through Michael of sending updates out to board of directors and um, our marketing team through our website. We want to let you know that we are watching Isaac and Helene, which are also forming in the Atlantic. And um, your disaster team is on ready and standby to make sure that should any information need to be sent out about that, that, that we will make sure it's sent out appropriately. You know, when you talk about long-term recovery and, and we talk that we're thinking about the East Coast and the possibility of those storms hitting there, we know that it takes a long time to recover. And it's hard to believe that it's been two years since the floods really devastated the North Shore and the Baton Rouge um, region uh, from the 2016 August flood. We know that we actually were hit with floods in March. So we had kind of a double whammy that hit us in 2016. We made a commitment a long time ago, not just to respond immediately following the storm, because we did that. And you've all heard about the fact that we stood a warehouse up. We distributed 1.5 million items, at $1.4 million. But we want to tell you that it's now been two years. So I want to let you know about what all your volunteers and the collaborations that we've been working on have been able to achieve. Some of the overall numbers that I can report to you today, 
so far to date, we have worked with 3,977 volunteers. And those volunteers have given 49,432 hours in service. And that's direct service and help to the families and individuals that have been, been impacted by the storm. That means they might have mucked and gut their houses. They might have shown up and torn out um, the sheetrock. They could have put sheetrock back up. They could have installed flooring and plumbing. They've done all kinds of different things to try to help families and individuals that have been impacted because of the flood. And if you look at those 49,000 hours, that's actually $1.193 million worth of services that they've given back. And that's money that families would have had to come out of pocket with to recover if it weren't for our collaborations and the people and the volunteers that came forward. We've actually been very lucky. We've received over $1.5 million in donated goods. And I'm really happy to say that we've worked with 103 organizations throughout this entire process in these two years. And to date, in hard dollars, aside from the volunteer hours and the value of those hours and the donated goods, we've actually invested over $1.7 million directly into goods that have been able to be put to use in the families. That's the hard materials, the siding for their houses, the flooring, the cabinets, the plumbing, the hardware, everything that you could possibly think of that families need to recover. But the big number, if you look at everything that we've done to date, we've taken all those hours all those donated goods and that $1.7 million, and we've leveraged that into $4.45 million that have been leveraged in recovery services. So I, I just wanna say thank you for everybody and their belief and in, in why we need to continue this work. And literally while I was driving here this morning, I got an email from um, Southeast Louisiana Legal Services. So I wanna talk about how these collaborations, and this leads into the work that Mary Ambrose and Todd Baptiste are doing with collaborative work in United Ways. We collaborated with Southeast Louisiana Legal because one of the barriers we found to people to recovering was they had legal issues that were coming up. And so we partnered with Southeast Louisiana Legal and I'm happy to say that Laura Tuggle reported to me this morning, they'd helped 58 families through legal issues that were barriers for them being able to recover. That's things like working directly with them for FEMA, Restore Louisiana, the Small Business Administration, and a lot of times on succession issues, just little paperwork that had not been filed, so they weren't able to get financial resources to recover. So I wanna say, I'm really happy that the collaborative spirit in United Way and bringing people to the table is part of our DNA, because if we look at partnering people like Southeast Louisiana Legal, that's why we can recover. With that, that leads directly into Mary Ambrose, who's gonna give us a great report on community impact and what's happening. Thanks, Jameen, and good morning, everybody. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Todd Baptiste, our new senior VP uh, for Community Impact. But first, I wanna give a huge shout out and congratulations to Chiquita Lattimore, our VP, I mean, I'm sorry, our Director of Financial Capability Services uh, she has been accepted into Leadership North Shore. I'm really excited because she is the second one. Tap Bowie, I think we reported last time, had been accepted into the New Orleans Regional Leadership Institute. And so that's two of our staff uh, that are new to their positions that are in leadership um, institutes, uh, on both on the North Shore and the South Shore. So congratulations, Chiquita and Tap. I am so proud of you guys. And now I'm going to turn it over to our new senior VP, Todd Baptiste, to talk about our equity work. Good morning, and thank you, Mary. Uh, I'm excited to report and to be a part of the senior management team here as we focus on equity, diversity, and inclusion. And in keeping with our blueprint for prosperity, we launched our new grant process with a laser focus on poverty eradication. Embedded in that blueprint are guiding principles for any funded partner, program, or collaborative to commit themselves to our guiding principles. Some of those guiding principles are connectivity, equity, lived experience, long-term commitment, shared responsibility, and systems change. We realized to fully implement this blueprint, we needed to create specific indicators around equity. To do this well, we began internally with surveys of our staff, and as a result of those surveys, we held what we call our first equity training with the help of Dr. Toya Teamer on August 15th. Some of those topics included reframing our world where we looked at our culture, revisiting the mental model, talking about how we needed to change things, leading and doing for a, just a few examples. 
In addition to that, we held meetings with our partner agencies, facilitated by Dr. Toya Tima on August 23rd on the North Shore and the South Shore. Participation was great. We asked some of our partners to come in and talk directly about those experiences that they were doing within their respective organizations. And we had the active participation of Mary Sellers from the North Shore. She's from Youth Service Bureau. She gave real good specific examples on how her organization for addressing equity and inclusion. For the South Shore, we were fortunate to have Dr. Keith Lederman share some of their organizational work that addressed equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so that we could be very intentional, we had one of our collaborative partners, Kate Swinburne, come in and talk about how collaboratives are incorporating equity, diversity, and inclusion. And to top it off, we had the great leadership of Lamar Goddard with the Data Center, just talking about the specific examples about uh, data and how you aggregate data and how you use that data to make good decisions. Feedback from staff was great and all of our partners was amazing at the fact that United Way was taking this challenge on. We're continuing to work hard with Dr. Tima today and the senior leadership team as we participate in a retreat over here at the Audubon Zoo for the next to, for, for two days at least. And our goal here is to outline actionable steps around some of our policies and procedures, protocols, specific trainings we might need to take on, board engagement, our website that includes our dashboard. And i just like to say stand by because we're taking this challenge on and we're, we're going to give it our best and just stand by for future updates. Great. Uh, thanks, Todd. Thanks again. Um, and congratulations to you once again for your promotion and joining uh, the leadership team here at you know, Southeast Louisiana. So, um, as we close out, just a quick, uh, just a, a quick recap. You heard about the campaign, and I hope that uh, that you'll share this information with your friends out there. The Tocqueville Gala is an exciting opportunity for us to recognize an amazing person, Mary Keller's serve a gun, and also the Women United uh, effort. Uh, if you're out there, you're, if you're a man, you can make the donation and sponsor your significant other to join. Uh, we encourage you to do so. Thanks to Charmaine and. Um, our public policy leadership, Kim Sport, for all the great work that's taken place around policy and advocacy, which is just, once again, validates that we can raise all the resources in the world, but um, unless we pair it with smart policy, we can we can never have the level of impact that we would hope to achieve otherwise. Um, Jameen, thanks for updating us on the, the two-year flood recovery, and we do keep our um, our colleagues on the East Coast and our thought and prayers as, uh, as Florence has headed their way, and we're prepared for the storms that may eventually make it into the Gulf. And if they do, just know that, uh, that your staff and volunteers at Now West Southeast Louisiana are very prepared. <clears throat> Congratulations to Chiquita for leadership North Shore. And, uh, and Ty, once again, thanks for your leadership on the equity work. So that concludes our September uh, investor call. Um, we would like you to remember that you have one life to live, but to live better, you must live united. Thanks and have a great week. <laughs>